quality is a worldwide concern. You may be surprised to learn that it's not just factories and car emissions in the big cities that contribute to the pollution. Even here in the Okanagan Valley, it seems we use our air as a dump site and we walk around like human vacuums sucking up the pollutants. What does this have to do with you? The burning of wood and agricultural waste puts dangerous levels of smoke into our air. This results in inhaled fine particulate matter settling deep in your lungs, causing serious health issues. Children under five are most susceptible as their lungs are still developing. Valley communities experience frequent temperature inversions, causing air pollutants to be trapped in the valley. Whether you're planning on removing your orchard or just doing your seasonal pruning, there are recommended guidelines to follow that are best for the environment. I think uh, the industry, uh, we, we can make a difference in terms of the air quality in the Okanagan Valley. We all have to be responsible in how we manage uh, orchard block removal and how we ultimately uh, conform to best management practices when it comes to uh, you know, deciding whether to burn uh, effectively and cleanly or, or whether to, uh, in, to recycle uh, all that can be done in that sense. There are several options for wood waste and orchard infrastructure removal. It is important to plan ahead for this process and discuss the options with your contractor. I was talking with Mark briefly about what's going on here with regards to the reclamation of a lot of the uh, apple wood for use in home heating and restaurants, uh, which is uh, quite a positive departure from what normally happens in this situation where the wood's just piled into a big basic uh, pyre and then burned, which uh, provides very little a positive impact to anything other than just clearing the land so there's obviously some thought going to be given into this process here which is good for us because uh, we are the organic vineyard that is going to come in and farm this in an organic way and uh, doing that um, type of uh, harvest is uh, part of what we believe is good for the environment and, uh, and this follows in that footsteps it's a good first step of uh, where this property hopefully one day will ultimately be and that is uh, being a good environmental uh, a part of the uh, farming community of, of this region. Best practices for orchard removal include salvaging, recycling, excavating, chipping, hauling to the landfill and the least desirable method, burning. And the first thing that we've done here, we, we remove all the good, the good fire, the good wood, the good firewood. It's all along the, the fence. The second thing to do is to chip the remaining branches we, we have on the, on the ground here. After that, we will send the leftover, the stumps to the landfill for, for, for chipping and grinding. After that, what we will do is we will use a flail mower to chip all the leftover roots and then we will spay the property with the remaining chips. Before any of these processes take place, it is important to separate out materials such as irrigation tubing, black poly or PVC, wire, treated posts, and agricultural plastics. It's amazing nowadays how much uh, plastic is used in the agricultural industry, right from irrigation tubing to twine to silage bags to ground crop plastic. And what we discovered is once separated that this material is definitely a valuable, it's reusable, We've sent samples uh, to the manufacturers to determine what the components of the plastic are and if it's indeed recyclable. And the results have uh, indicated that there's a, a large volume of this material that can be reused and remanufactured. 
and uh, the success of the project has been immense. The agricultural communities cooperated very well, and uh, I think we're setting the tone for across the province and beyond with this. Materials must be separated. That's going to go a long way uh, from the, the headaches of trying to pull uh, treated posts and PVC out of a of an already stacked burn pile. I think if those materials are set aside, it's going to make, be a much more efficient uh, a way of uh, the grower dealing with that. It is against the law to burn painted or treated wood, as well as any form of plastics. Do not pile everything together with your removed trees. The first step in your orchard removal may include salvaging the wood from the larger old-growth trees. What we're going to do here is we snip the branches off. Most of the branches will get chipped. Uh, the clear wood, that the trunk there of the tree, will get either turned into firewood or veneer. And that's after they chip, we pull out the stump, nip the stump off, nip the top off, and then everything gets tripped at once and stacked and piled neatly. That's our process. So there's virtually no waste. Everything gets chipped or firewood or used for uh, furniture. Whether you're excavating yourself or hiring a contractor, be sure to remove most of the dirt and rocks from the stumps. This is accomplished by banging the tree once pulled out, or if using an excavator with a thumb, squeeze the stump to remove the dirt and rocks before loading. The landfill do not want uh, stumps with a bunch of uh, dirt attached to root systems. It's too hard on, on, the, on, on the chipper over there. So what it does, it just clamps the roots, or shake it up to make sure there's no dirt at the bottom of the roots. The removed trees can be hauled to the landfill and chipped there in a tub grinder. Many landfills, such as the RDOS and Summerland, offer no tipping fee on properly prepared agricultural wood waste. We asked ourselves, what can we do to, to eliminate or help to reduce the amount of burning? And what the board de determined was probably the most effective thing that we could do immediately was to waive all tipping fees at landfills for agricultural wood waste or organic materials. Chipping can be done on site with a small chipper and worked back into the soil. Growers should contact the Summerland Research Station for best advice on utilizing wood chips. I can show you there's a couple of boys over there that are raking it and putting the thicker branches all butt and first so it can go into the chipper. And the chipper comes along, along the lanes and picks it up, puts them in the machine and that's it. There are a wide variety of chippers on the market to chip various sizes of wood. When we're dealing with a, uh, a, bl a block with uh, trees of this size, uh, certainly if there are um, large drum chippers available uh, within the regional district. Uh, it, it's one way of dealing with trees of this size if, if the uh, firewood is not going to be harvested. This will create a, an enormous amount of, of uh, wood chips to be incorporated into the soil. Uh, as, as we know from the coarse soils in the Okanagan, uh, soil fertility is sometimes a problem. It's going to improve with wood chips and it's also going to improve the water conservation abilities of that soil. So here we have an example of a tree that, uh, that could easily be uh, mulched with a flail mower, providing the grower has a flail mower. Um, 
there, there is of course the uh, uh, the problem of of how much wood is in the row. So you'd have to uh, probably scatter this wood uh, throughout the row so that you're not uh, choking up the film. Or uh, definitely uh, another another way to uh, increase the the fertility of the soil. I think the the whole concept of of uh, chipping is exactly that. If you choose to burn the removed trees, there are a few guidelines to follow. Be sure everything in the pile is dry and that all illegal materials have been removed. Wood waste should be dried at least six months and the stumps up to a year. Burning green wood produces more smoke pollution. Okay, this is uh, the residue pile that was left from our project that we worked on last September. Uh, we took the stumps, we pushed them out. All the branches that were not turn usable for firewood are put into this pile. Most cases this is probably going to be burnt. If it has to be burnt, uh, it should be uh, absolutely dry so you don't get the uh, pollution in the air. Here's a good example of a sort of a burn pile under, under development. Uh, you know, it, the, the first thing that stands out is that uh, it is positioned on the edge of a bank and as such there is a natural airflow coming up from the ravine. That natural airflow actually provides the air induction into that wood pile that will cause it to burn very quickly and very hot with minimal smoke. It's important that everyone does their part. One person can make a difference. <laughs>